Um, I'm, I'm just going to start by saying that I am not, and nobody in here is a traitor. They're not ignoring their constituents. They are all in good faith. I was raised thinking that we were the goodies and that over there were the baddies. And what I found when I got here was that everybody pretty much mm. just in a different way wants to get to the same conclusion. And I will wager that more so than the Prime Minister, I spend time in my constituency office loving and laughing with my <coughs> constituents, no matter what they voted. I don't just want to probe into the idea that we all get abuse, and no doubt we're going to hear a lot of that today, because we all get abuse. And I've had a death threat this week that literally quoted the Prime Minister and used the Prime Minister's name and words in a death threat that was delivered to my staff. Um, so we know that it, it gets out. What I want to look at today, and what I want answers to today, is when there is a clear strategy to divide. The use of language yesterday and over the past few weeks, such as the surrender bill, such as invoking the war, such as talking about betrayal and treachery, it has clearly been tested and workshopped and worked up, and it is entirely designed to inflame hatred and division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. It works. It is working. I, I mean, we're all ambitious. I'm not going to pretend that I'm not ambitious, but I also have a soul. It is not sincere. It is totally planned. It is completely and utterly a part of a strategy designed by somebody to harm and cause hatred in our country. When I hear of my friend's murder and the way that it has made me and my colleagues feel and feel scared, described as humbug, I actually don't feel anger towards the Prime Minister. I feel pity for those of you who still have to toe his line. You, the people opposite me know how appalling it was to describe the murder of my friend as mere humbug. I want, I, I, can I ask everybody to act with calm and dignity in this moment? I want to ask the Prime Minister to apologise and to tell him that the bravest, strongest thing to say is sorry. It will make him look good. It will not upset the people who want Brexit in this country if he acts for once like a statesman. Calling me names, putting words in my mouth and in the mouth of my dead friend makes me cross and angry. It makes me scared even. But I will not react. The Prime Minister wants me to react so that I join in the chaos that keeps this hatred and fear on our streets. I simply ask the Minister today to request to the Prime Minister, who is notable by his bravery today, I ask him I ask him to ask the Prime Minister to meet with me in private with his advisers and some of my colleagues and my friends from Joe's family so that we can explain our grief and try to make him understand why it is so abhorrent that he has chosen a strategy to divide rather than to lead. Yeah. Minister Foster. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I will show a calm and dignity in, de in my responses today as well. I would be very clear that the government is looking at how we create a safe environment, how we, and not just in terms of for members of parliament, but for journalists and for the others in public life who can face abuse merely for wanting to be involved in what they do, and of course members of the judiciary. I am always clear no one is a traitor for saying what they believe or for arguing a different political point. That is part of public 
debate. The last actual traitor was in 1946, someone who tried to support those looking to overturn this democracy by violent means. But I think it is right to say that the government is moving to take action. We have the online harms white paper working with colleagues in the Department for Culture, Media and Sport to tackle some of the corrosive nature of the debate online. We see some of the work being done across government to try and tackle where things are being done and to make sure people do feel safe to express their views and being very clear that the law applies as much online as it does in the physical world. And I think we can all look at what may have been said over years, and I'm sure the honourable member will look at anything she said over <coughs> the years about particular political, fi particular political figures as well. But it is about how we don't get into a game of what aboutery, but it's how we focus on what we can do to protect. And also heard the comments you made this morning, Mr Speaker, about some of the suggestions, and I'm sure you, like me, will be interested to hear some of the thoughts that come out about that idea that has been floated of you. And of course, as the minister whose responsibility it is for our Defending Democracy programme, I'll be only too happy to meet with the honourable member to discuss in a different format to where it comes and ultimately to see where we can go with the approach to have. And as I say, we've already committed to legislate around intimidation election time. One of the things that many picked up last time round following the election and see this as an ongoing debate. Plus, even actually yesterday, if this House hadn't been meeting, my, I was due to be having a meeting with the police to discuss what we could do to ensure all candidates received support in any future general election, as it's not just about when people are members of this place that they would face intimidation and abuse. I would say, Mr Speaker, the Government is taking a, ra a range of actions, and ultimately it is for everyone to think about what they, what they say and also how they have contributed. And certainly today, what they'll get from the Government is a calm dignity in response and making clear what we are doing to tackle this issue and create a safe environment for all, not for debate, not just members of Parliament.